the good news about solving inequalities is that we solve them exactly like we solve equations. Now, obviously, there's something a little different here. We have an, this one's a less than or equal to. This one is a greater than. There's also a greater than or equal to, and there's a less than. But again, the way that we solve the inequalities is by inverse operations. So I notice that this variable is being multiplied by 3. So to undo that, we divide by 3. Whatever I do to one side, I've got to do to the other side as well. So x is less than or equal to 5. In the second one, this one's a two-step inequality. So the x is being multiplied by 4, and then 7 is being subtracted from it. Well, inverse operations means we have to undo them in the reverse order. So I need to undo the minus 7, and then I'll undo the times by 4. So I'm going to undo minus 7 by adding 7 to both sides. So then I have 4x is greater than 16. And then undo the multiply by 4 by dividing by 4. So x is greater than 4. So you might be thinking, okay, big deal. Um, so what's the, what's the difference? Well, this is my solution. And, you know, we can check this by plugging it back in. Since x, well, it's actually less than or equal to 5. But 3 times 5, we know is 15. Well, it's equal to it, and that's fine. But this is the boundary. So really what we have found is a boundary. Over here in this one, when we multiply 4 by 4, we get 16. And when we subtract 7, we equal 9. Now, this one doesn't say we can equal it. It just wants to be greater than it. So there are two specific ways that solving inequalities is different than equations. Because other than these two exceptions, everything else is identical. You've seen me solve these two inequalities, and I solve them the exact same way I would have solved the equations. One is that when you're done, you have to graph the solution, unless it's a word problem. My personal preference is that you put the solution right there in the middle, and then you put the numbers on the left and on the right on the number line. So 4 is on the left, 6 is on the right. Now, a solution that is equal to, in this case, x is less than or equal to 5, whenever it's equal to it, you put a closed dot, which shows that it can actually be that value. And then all values greater than, or sorry, all the values that are less than 5 go to the left. So all these values in this direction are less than, and this value, of course, is equal to 5. So, and I don't want that still there. Get rid of that. Um, one thing that you can do to check your work is now to check any of the numbers to the left of 5. So down here, I could use 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. If 0 is involved, I like to use 0 because 0 is the easiest one to try. So if I were to replace the x with 0, 3 times 0 is 0, and 0 is less than or equal to, not equal to, but less than. So I know that my arrow is pointing in the correct direction. With the two-step inequality, my boundary is 4. To the left of 4, I have 3, and on the right, 5. Now this one is not equal to. x is greater than. So since it's not equal to, I still put a dot on 4, but we call it an open dot. And then all the values that uh, um, satisfy this one are greater than 4, so all the ones to the right. Now 0 this time is not involved. So something easy like 10. So if I try 4 times 10, that's 40. And 40 minus 7 is 33. And 33 is greater than 9. And so my arrow is going in the correct direction. So that's one of the ways that solving an inequality is different, is that our solution, we graph it, because it's all of these numbers to the right of 4. Anything larger, in fact, even 4.1 works, and 4.01 works. That's why we use an open dot. We don't put a dot in on 5, because 4.001 would work. Over here, of course, we put a closed dot saying it can be exactly 5. Um, and something that's important to understand is notice that um, the properties of equality that we use for equations, like the addition property of equality, meaning you can add the same thing to both sides, and it remains true, um, the subtraction property of equality, the multiplication property of equality, the division property of equality, all those are still true. 
with one other exception. So let me explain these and give you an example. We're going to start with a statement that you know is true. 8 is less than 12. Well, the addition property of equality says that I can add anything I want to to both sides, and the sentence remains true. Like, I, I could add 5 to both sides. And 13 is still less than 17. I could subtract the same thing from both sides. Let's subtract 7. And 1 is less than 5. We know that to be true. I can multiply both sides by the same thing. Let's multiply by 3. So 24 is still less than 36. Still true. I can divide both sides by the same thing. Divide by 4. And 2 is less than 3. Still true. So how is, how is it different? The only way that solving inequalities is different from equations is if I multiply both sides by a negative. So if I had multiplied it by a negative 3, is negative 24 less than negative 36? Well, on our number line, here's 0, here's negative 24, here's negative 36. The values on the left are less. So this is no longer true. And all we have to do is if we multiply both sides of the equation or the inequality by a negative, we simply have to reverse the inequality sign. Because as you can see, negative 24 is greater than negative 36. Same rule for if you divide by a negative. So if I divide both sides by negative 4, is negative 2 less than negative 3? Again, on the number line, here's 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Well, on the left is less. And you can see that negative 2 is not less than negative 3. Negative 2 is greater than negative 3. So that's it. Those are the two things. If you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip the inequality sign around. And then you have to graph your answer when you're done. Let's try a couple of special cases here. If you'd like to try them on your own and check with me, pause the video now and try them and then check them. The one on the left is a one-step inequality which means it takes one step to undo the multiplication. And I undo the multiplication by dividing both sides by negative 2. And as soon as I divide by negative 2, I turn the inequality symbol around or else I forget. And x is greater than negative 5. And then I graph that on a number line. So here's negative 5. Keeping in mind, Negative 6 is to the left, and negative 4 is on the right. Don't get it backwards, because you actually get it wrong if you put negative 4 on the left and negative 6 on the right. This one is not equal to, so we put an open dot, and the values are greater than. And I could check that by putting in 0, because 0 is on the right. Negative 2 times 0 is 0, and that's less than 10, and so that's correct. Uh, the second one, I start by undoing the plus 2 by subtracting 2 from each side of the inequality. So negative, and I always uh, put it in the denominator. When I have a choice with this one, I usually put my negatives in the numerator, but I want to get rid of the negative along with the division. And you can put it either on top or on bottom, not both. That would be wrong. Either one's okay, and we've actually gone over that in class already. So I choose to put it with the number, and that's still greater than or equal to, in this case, 6. And then I undo the division by negative 7 by multiplying both sides by negative 7. And as soon as I multiply or, or divide by a negative, I flip the inequality sign around so I don't forget. And x is less than or equal to negative 42. And then my number line is not a problem because I don't have to try to include zero and do all that difficult stuff to try to fit everything on the line. Negative 43 is on the left 
and negative 41 is on the right. This one is equal to it, so I put a closed dot, and the values that are less than go to the left. So just to make it easier on myself, I'm going to try negative 70, because negative 70 is to the left of negative 42. So negative 70 in place of the x. Now a negative negative becomes a positive. And 70 divided by 7 is 10. And 10 plus 2 is 12. And 12 is greater than 8. So we know we did it right.